Hello, and welcome to the Exit Accountant Annual Budget Instruction video. In this walkthrough, I'll guide you through the details of how to use the Annual Budget Template step-by-step. -step. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Google Sheets version, but please note that the process is very similar in Excel, so you can follow along no matter which one you're using. Before we begin, let me explain something important about the template. Some parts of the sheet are protected to keep the formulas safe. So if you see a pop-up message when you type, you can simply click Cancel. If you ever need to unprotect the sheet, you can do so easily. In Google Sheets, just click OK when prompted. Or in Excel, go to the Review tab and select Unprotect Sheet. Next, you'll notice that this template has 20 different tabs. At the top of each tab, you'll find a navigation menu that makes it easy to move around the template. All right, let's get started. Let's jump into the very first tab of this template, which is the Setup tab. This is where you'll set the foundation for your whole annual budget. Think of it as your control center. Here you can set things like your currency, your start year, your categories, and even the names of the people contributing to the budget. Let's start on the left side. Here you can set your currency. Just type it in. Right below, you'll choose your start month and start year. Now, if you look over to the right side of the tab, you'll see the period coverage for this budget template. That's super important because the start month and year you set here will define the whole coverage of your budget. The template will only read and calculate transactions you enter within that range. Next, right below, we have the contributors section. You can add up to six users here. This is really handy if you're budgeting with a partner, your family, or even roommates. You can also make it more personal by adding profile pictures. To do that, just click on the cell, go to Insert Image, Insert Image in Cell, and drop in your picture. Now let's move back up to the category setup. Here you have six main categories you can customize. Income, Expense, Bills, Debt Payments, Sinking Funds or Savings, Bank, credit accounts. For debt, savings, and bank credit accounts, you'll also see a place to enter your initial balance. This initial balance will be applied starting from the month you selected earlier. For example, if you set March 2025 as your start month, the initial balances here will begin in March. After that, the balances will update automatically based on your transactions. Now let's add the subcategories for each sections. For income, expense, and bills, it's pretty straightforward. You can add up to 30 subcategories each. I'll show you how I fill these in. A quick note, you can delete or copy paste into editable cells, but one important thing, don't cut and paste because that can break the formulas. Now let's move to the debt payments, savings, and bank slash credit accounts. I often get asked, what's the difference between savings or sinking funds here and balance accounts? Here's how I like to explain it. You use savings or sinking funds category for money you're setting aside for the future and that you don't plan to touch very often. For example, you want to add pension fund, dream house fund, or kids college fund. Meanwhile, you use bank or credit accounts for the regular accounts you use to pay your bills, expenses, and transactions. So here I will fill in, for example, my Citibank saving accounts, Wells Fargo checking accounts, and Citibank credit card. Don't record the same account in both categories. If you put an account under balance accounts, don't also put it under savings. Otherwise, it will be counted twice. For example, if you have a regular savings account that you use day to day, list it under balance accounts, not both. All right, let's scroll down a little further in the setup tab. Here you can set up extra calendar entries that will show up later in the calendar tab. It's super simple. Just type in the title or activity in the left column, and then in these little boxes, you enter the day of the month under the right month. For example, if I want to record my friend Lily's birthday on June 20th, I'll type Lily's birthday here, and then under June, I'll just type in the number 20. Important tip, just type the number for the date, nothing else. Now, the last section of this page is the set recurring transactions. This is where you set up anything that repeats regularly, like bills, debt payments, or monthly income. The nice thing is, you only set it up once here, and it will automatically show up in your payment schedule and calendar tabs. Here's how it works, left to right. Category, pick from the dropdown, like bills or income. Subcategory, 
Pick from the dropdown. This comes from the subcategories you set up earlier. Frequency. Choose how often it repeats. Once a week, every two weeks, every four weeks, monthly, quarterly, or every six months. Account. Choose the account where the money comes from or goes into. This comes from the bank slash credit accounts you set up above. Amount. Just type in the amount. User slash person. Pick who it belongs to if you're budgeting with multiple users. Start date. Enter the date when this recurring transaction begins. And that's it. Once you've filled this out, your recurring payments will flow automatically into the right places, so you don't have to keep typing them in every month. Now let's move to the Smart Calendar tab. Here your data is automatically pulled from the Setup tab, the Payment Schedule tab, and any extra calendar entries you add directly in this tab. On the left side, you'll find the Smart Calendar settings. From here, you can choose your view options. View all tasks. View only tasks that are not done. Or view tasks that are completed. In the calendar, completed tasks will show with a check mark, and the text will appear with a strike through. Tasks that are not yet completed will remain unchecked. To change the calendar, month, and year, simply select the month from the dropdown and type in the year. The schedule will update automatically. Finally, in the table below, you can add extra calendar entries for any ad hoc schedules or one-time tasks you'd like to track. Now let's move to the Payment Schedule tab. This schedule is automatically generated from the recurring transaction setup. When you make a payment, simply click the checkbox in the Paid column on the right. Once you do this, the transaction is automatically recorded in the Transactions tab and reflected in all other relevant tabs. Important, after checking the box, you do not need to manually enter the same transaction in the Transactions tab. Doing so would create a duplicate entry. Although this table is powered by formulas, you can still make changes if needed. For example, if you want to update the actual amount paid or adjust the payment date, simply type the correct value directly into the cell. The updates will automatically flow through the rest of the template. Now let's move to the Transaction tab. This is where you record your ad hoc transactions, such as grocery expenses, unexpected income, or any other one-time items. The recording process is very straightforward. First, insert the date of the transaction. Next, choose the category. Then select the appropriate subcategory from the drop-down menu. After that, enter the account balance or bank account used. Input the amount of the transaction. Add the contributor if needed. And finally, you can also include notes for extra details. Once entered, the transaction will automatically flow into the rest of the template and update your reports. Now let's move to the Transfer tab. The difference between the Transfer tab and the Transaction tab is that the Transfer tab is used to record movements between your own accounts. For example, transferring money from your savings account to your credit card account, this is also where you record credit card payments. To do this, first add the date of the payment. In the From field, select the account you're paying from, such as your savings account. In the To Plus field, select your credit card account. Enter the amount you are paying. Important. In the Setup tab, make sure that any credit card balance is entered as a negative amount. For example, if in the Setup tab, your credit card balance is negative $3,400, and in the Transfer tab, you record a payment of $500, the balance will automatically reduce to negative $2,900. And that's how the Transfer tab works. Now let's move to the Monthly tab. This is where you add your budget numbers and planning for each month and then compare them with your actual transactions. For Google Sheets users, when this tab is still empty, meaning you haven't added any budget data yet, the graphs at the top will display a message saying, add series to start visualizing your data. Don't worry, once you enter your budget numbers, the graphs will automatically update and show your visuals. Let's start by adding your budget income and expenses. Simply enter your budget numbers right beside the subcategories in each table. The white columns are where you input your budget amounts, while the gray or darker columns are for the actual numbers. These actuals are automatically filled in with formulas that pull data from the Transaction tab. Once you've filled in your budget information, the monthly tab will look like this. At the top, you'll see the summaries for each category, with a comparison between your budget and actual amounts. In the middle table, you'll find the cash flow summaries. Using the dropdown, 
you can switch between viewing your budget cash flow summary or your actual cash flow summary. On the left side, you'll see your top 10 transactions. Simply select the category you want to analyze. For example, if you'd like to check your top 10 expenses, select Expense, and the list will show your 10 largest expenses for that month. If you'd like to drill down into the details of any transaction, just click the link at the bottom. This will take you directly to the Transaction tab. Just one little note. In the Accounts table, you'll see the beginning balance column. This column is white, which means you can edit it. However, it already contains a formula that automatically pulls the balance from the previous month's ending balance. If you ever need to make adjustments, you can still manually change the numbers here. Just keep in mind that doing so will override the formula. And that's how the monthly tab works. Now let's move on to the annual totals tab. In this tab, you can see the details of each subcategory per month across the whole year. This gives you a clear picture of how your budget and spending evolve month by month. On the left side, there's a filter where you can choose to view all users combined or select a specific user. By selecting a person, you'll be able to see their individual income and spending details per month annually. This makes it easy to track not only the overall household or group finances, but also how each contributor is managing their budget throughout the year. Finally, let's move to the Annual Dashboard tab. This tab is a complete summary of all your transactions for the year. You don't need to input anything here. It's all generated automatically from the data you've entered in the other tabs. On this dashboard, you'll find the total of each category for the year, including income, expenses, bills, savings, and debts. A cash flow summary to show you how money is moving in and out. An expense breakdown and an income breakdown by month so you can spot trends throughout the year. A cash flow summary per contributor, which helps if you're tracking multiple people. And finally, your total net worth, giving you a big picture view of your finances. Now, at the bottom part of the annual dashboard, you'll find three tables that summarize your savings, debts, and account balances on an annual basis. Here you can see the beginning balance, the ending balance, and the actual movement for each category throughout the year. This gives you a clear overview of how your money flows and changes over time, helping you understand your overall financial progress at a glance. And that's it. You've now walked through every tab of the annual budget template. With this tool, you can plan your budget, track your transactions, and understand your financial progress all in one place. Thank you for following along, and I hope this template helps you stay organized and reach your financial goals. Happy budgeting!